All right. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> End of week three. And geometry for this week, we're going to start the triangles unit. I know it's the middle of the week, but say la vie. What does anybody, can anybody tell me anything that they already know about triangles? Audrey's talking about hypotenuse and legs. Anybody know what that means, what she's referring to? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Yeah. She's, the hypotenuse is the, the longest side of the right triangle. Um, we're not, that, thankfully, we're not going to start off with that. We're starting off with something a little bit more basic. Uh, and, and that is essentially how many degrees are there in every triangle? When you add up, the, the, there's, there's three angles. That's why it's called a triangle, of course. So how many total degrees are there when you, when you put those three angles together? Anybody know that? All right, then that's why we're here. That's where we're going to start. <laughs> that's OK. Um, if you've had a chance to look at the, the this next packet here, it's, it starts off with what's called the triangle angle sum theory. And right off the bat, this is an easy one. Every triangle has 180 degrees. Doesn't matter what shape it is, how, you know, how, how the sides look. I mean, you can, you can go look at any construction site and find triangles in building construction. Look at bridges. The next time you go over a big steel bridge, um, triangles are one of the most uh, reliable and best load bearing structures known to man. So that's why it's used so often in construction. So 180 degrees is all you ha ever have to worry about. And so when you see this little theory here with the measure of angle A added to the measure of angle B added to the measure of angle C equals 180. That's all there is to it. And so what you'll see in some of these uh, problems that we get into here is trying to make it more difficult to, for you to figure out a missing angle measurement, for instance. If you've got two of them, you can always find the third. It's, it's just 180 minus whatever else you got. So that's the first theory we'll be looking at. The second theory is a little bit more involved only because it's it's not really intuitive. So if, if you look at this, this diagram here next to where it says exterior angle theorem, there's three angles that are identified here. And one of them is outside the triangle. So the exterior angle theory, that exterior angle here that's labeled as number one is always equal to the sum of the two opposite angles. Not the one, not the angle next to it. But when you add angle two and three together, when you add angle two and three together, that's how you get the measure of angle one. If you're not sure why that's the case, Think about this angle one here with what it's adjacent to. Okay, that creates a linear pair, right? So those, those two angles, angle one and the one that's blank right there in that corner, those create that straight line, that 
that baseline of that triangle that's been extended out past the edge of the of the actual shape. So this once you know what these other two angles are, it's going to make sense that it equals angle number one. And I'll, I'll show you here on the whiteboard what I'm talking about. Maybe it'll make more sense that way. Instead of just talking about it. So I'm going to say this angle is 30 degrees and this angle is 55 degrees. I don't know. I'm just making it up. So how much is this remaining angle on the inside of the triangle? Well, that's where the first theory comes into play. You take 180 minus 30 minus 55. And that's going to equal. Whoops! That's going to equal the remaining interior angle. So 180 minus 30 is 150 minus 55. So I know my drawing doesn't really reflect it very well, but the remaining angle here should be 95, right? Because those, that's what I get for the interior angles. Now, this exterior angle here, I'm just gonna call that X for the moment. If it equals, according to the exterior angle sum, this is gonna equal these two, right? So that should be 85 degrees. Okay, so, what do I have here with this linear pair? Oh, I forgot to turn the projector on. I'm sorry, Audrey. You want to get the get the light? Yeah. So what's my total there of those those two angles, X and uh, what was it? X and ninety five? One eighty. Yeah, one eighty. Linear pair, straight angle. I get the same total as I would if I if I added up all three of the interior angles. So if you know the two that are on the inside, you can you can solve for this missing outside angle in a couple different ways. You can figure out what the third one is inside, and then look at this as a linear pair. Because it's still going to equal 180, and so are the interior angles. Or you can follow the exterior angle sum theory exactly, which is just a matter of adding the two interior angles together. And where, where I see students mess up is they, they start thinking, oh, I can just add one to two or something like that. And, and they forget to add the other two together to give you a total that's equal to that one that's on the outside. So those are the two most basic things that you'll see in, in all of this stuff about triangles. Anybody got questions? Okay. So then we once we when we start we take these two theories and we start looking at actual problems which one of the theories are you going to use on that first problem there we have an exterior angle no no so you're using the interior angle sum. Uh, it's hard to read on, on these handouts here, but there's a little bitty dot there next to 24 and another one next to 37. That's actually a circle. That's the degree symbol. 
So please don't think that one is the number of degrees. That's the that's that's how they're identifying this angle. This is angle one. So you got one angle that's 24 degrees, another angle is 37. Subtract those from 180, and that's what you're going to get with angle one. If we had to call that angle a certain type of angle, what is it? Does anything come to mind? It's not a right angle, right? Because you don't have a right, you don't have you don't have a right angle in it, so it's not a right triangle, I should say. It's actually an obtuse triangle because you've got that large angle one there that opens up wide. Because what do you get when you add 24 and 37 together? I don't expect you to know. I can't even do that in my head this morning. 61. That's only 61. So the, the missing angle there, angle number one is 119 degrees. Okay, it's, it's larger than 90 degrees, so it's obtuse. So problems two and three, you're gonna to have to use the exterior angle theory. Well, you don't have to, you could, but that's what it's set up for. So how much is angle one in problem number two? And we're going to add the two opposite angles together, and that's going to give you that exterior angle. What? No, you didn't add the two other angles together. Be 128 128 right it's not it's not this remaining angle here in the in the center of the triangle it's not that angle that's not the measure of this angle number one you have to add these other two angle measurements together because that's it that's all you got to do is just add them together you don't have right, to, to get number one right I took that, added it together, and then took that and subtracted it from 180. Well, that's that, that's going to give you the other angle on the inside of the triangle. So the, if it's if if that 128 from 180, that makes sense. Then 52 degrees would be this missing angle on the inside, but it's not labeled. That's not the one that we're trying to find right now. But like I did on the whiteboard a minute ago, if you add 52 and this 128 together, you're gonna to get that straight angle as though it were a linear pair, right? Linear pair angles are supplementary. So visually, you also should be thinking about, okay, if this one, if I'm saying that angle one is 52, why is it so wide open? 52, 52, look at the other 52 degree angle. It's 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 an acute angle it's sharp it's it's much smaller it doesn't open up anywhere near as much as angle one does so that's that's something that visually you can do to sort of check your check your math also because if you say 52 here for angle one you got to be thinking for a second hey wait a minute this this looks like an obtuse angle 52 degrees is not an obtuse angle Remember the definition for obtuse is it's got to be greater than 90 degrees. So I don't know if you've looked at ang uh, question number three yet or not, but it is also another exterior angle sum. <laughs> Audrey's already answered it. She's got 25. Right, she's, she's kind of using a little bit of the inverse of the exterior angle sum, what she just described to me. I don't know if you guys could hear her at home. 
104 minus 79 is going to be this angle, angle number one. Because remember that if you use that, that theory, the theory says two and three together are going to equal one. So if you know what angle one is and you know what angle two is, subtract one from the other, you're going to get the third one. Let's see if it shows us that. Now it just gives us a number. It doesn't show the calculation. So even with these first three problems, hopefully you can start to see that there's only so many variations of these, these type of, is, I don't, don't want to call them equations, but I guess they are a form of equation. There's only so many things they can do with, with these triangle measurements and angle measurements that are going to challenge you because it all comes down to those first two theories. Now you get into problems like four, five, six, and seven. Now they're just gonna add some layers to this thing to try to help you, help challenge you a little bit more and to come up with other measurements. And there's no real specified way to go about solving these. And like, like so many other things in geometry, it comes down to what you see first, what makes sense to try to tackle first. Um, like in problem number four, we got two distinct triangles. We know two of the angles on the triangle on the left. We only know one of the angles on the triangle on the right. So you wanna find angle number one first, go for it, that's easy because then you know all three angles of that small triangle on the left. What would you do to find angle number three? Take 84 minus 30, 43. That's that's not what I would do. Anybody else have an idea? Put up angle two and forty-three together and divide by ten minus you just subtract one eighty from do, do you know what angle two is? No. <laughs> yeah, that's the and and this the reason I'm asking about angle three is because this goes back to some earlier definition work that we've already done and Think about the, what I just did on the whiteboard a minute ago. What did I show you? Linear pair. Look at this, look at this long, because there's actually three triangles there in problem number four. Did anybody else see three triangles? You got this little skinny one here on the left. <coughs> it's easy to come up with angle one. You've got this one here that's kind of leaning over to the left. That's an obtuse triangle. That angle three there has got to be larger than 90 degrees because it's leaning outwards compared to the line that it intersects. Plus, you've got this big triangle. If you ignore this center line, you've got this big triangle that includes all of those. So if I just look at this part of the triangle, that's where the linear pair intersection is. So angle three is actually 180 minus 84. So 96. Like I said, it's it's not it's larger than a right angle, 96 degrees larger than 90. So now that you know what angle three is. Now you know two of the three angles for that triangle on the right, and you can find angle two. Now you can do what you described, Audrey. Add angle two, uh, excuse me, add three and 43 together, angle three and the 43 degrees, and then subtract that from 180 is gonna give you angle two. So th this idea of, of linear pair is gonna come up again and again in all of these situations with triangles.
because any of these triangles, if we, if you take, if you were to draw a triangle out on your piece of paper and you would continue with your ruler, like in angle, uh, problem number two here, that side of the triangle, if you extend that line beyond the, tr the triangle itself, you're creating those exterior angles. And you could do that with any side of any triangle. And what, what essentially happens in that in that case is you end up with linear pairs at every intersection, every angle of your triangle. I don't know if that makes sense or not. So let me go back to this whiteboard. So here's my linear pair drawing from earlier. So I can take any triangle And if I can I do a dash line? No. If I take this line here and extend it outwards, let me make that an arrow. So I'm going to take this line, extend it outwards. There's your linear pair situation right there with that one. Right, with these two angles, linear pair, 180. Let's do another one of the sides. Do this base side here, extend that out. I got another linear pair. And then from the, I mean, you can go either any direction with these. I can go this way, I can go that way. Right? And I'm creating linear pairs here and here. Now those are all exterior angles, so you've got options. You can, you can look at them again as linear pair, or you can use that exterior angle sum theory. If you know the two other interior angles, then probably makes more sense to just use that. So I'm probably sounding like a broken record here, but those, those original definitions that we did on day one, this is another case where they're gonna come back and you have to use them again. So if you, if you don't have all those definitions completed, go back and look at that first class video, get that stuff filled in. There's also a jam board, I think, in the materials that's got it all. So make sure that you've got all of those definitions because you're going to need them the whole term. Problem number five. What's the first thing you want to try to solve on that one? Number one. Audrey says angle number one and I would agree with that. Anybody want to comment on why she's saying angle one is the easiest one to start with? It's the 90 degree angle. Yeah, you, you already know, you know two of the three angles in that case. From there, I would probably, me personally, I would probably do these because that's, that's another one of those linear pair angles. But it's also Angle two, then, if you forget this other line out here, this little long skinny triangle, if you forget that that's part of a tr another triangle, this angle two is actually exterior to this right triangle. So you could use the exterior angle sum to figure out what angle two is. It's gonna be 90 plus whatever you came up with for angle number one. And then angle three is easy once you figure out two because you've already got this little tiny one here, 12 degrees plus whatever two is plus three. Questions, anybody? Am I going too fast? All right, now number six, problem number six is another one that uses an old definition.
the the easiest angle there again is probably angle one. Would you agree? For for this triangle here that's on the top, we already got two of the angles. Do we know what angle two is in the other triangle? We absolutely know, and there's no calculating. You don't have to do any calculation to figure out what angle two is, but you do need to remember your definitions. So what, what's created at that intersection right there? Linear pair. No, not a linear pair. This is a linear pair, straight line. We got, if you forget for a second, ignore the fact that these are two triangles. If these were just two lines crossing, what do, what do we have at that intersection? I can't believe you guys don't know this. Complementary angle? Nope. Complementary would add up to 90. It's a pair of angles. What kind of, of pair is it? It's not a linear pair. Got y'all stumped today. Congruent? No. Well, yeah, they are congruent, but why? How do you know? Well, no, apparently I'm terrible at note taking. Yeah, don't beat yourself up. Because what we have is what I'm drawing now on this whiteboard. That angle right there is 61 degrees. I absolutely already know what the angle is that I just labeled as X. And I don't have to do any calculating. Jonathan's right, they are congruent, but it's important for you to know why. Because they're the same angles. Yeah, but what is it called? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> you're gonna you're not gonna be happy with yourself when I type this out. Vertical angles. It's a pair, it's a pair of vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent. Remember. Every time, angles this way are congruent. We draw the angles this way, those are congruent. And that's why I said ignore the, and I know this is gonna be difficult for some people not being visual, but you know, forget the fact that you got a couple of, they're showing you a couple of triangles here and one of these, one of these is a right triangle. Go back to those first definitions and ignore some parts of this thing in order to fit the definition to the drawing that you got. Because it's not, the drawing is, is the drawing. The definitions are what they are. So it's, it's a matter of matching up what you're seeing here with the, with the verbal definitions. Linear pair, all these all these different relationships that we've been talking about with angles, linear pair, vertical angles, complementary, supplementary, alternate interior, alternate exterior. The, the best thing you can do to learn these is 
to, to make notes that have the words next to a drawing. Geometry is a visual subject. You've got to get these drawings into your mind somehow. And if you can't remember them, fine. If they're in your notes, you can find them. You know, this is this I'm not trying to say everybody's got to memorize everything. There's too much here to try to memorize in a short period of time. So just make sure, and when I say get it in your notes, I'm saying that for a reason because it's going to come up again. You're going to need it again. So just keep that in mind when you hear me babbling. So once you've recognized that angle two is the same as 61 degrees, now you've got two out of the three in that right triangle and it's easy to come up with angle three. Problem number seven, another one of these definitions, but it, it helps you know without doing any calculating what angles two and three are. How much are angle two and three? We got a line here, BC, that's bisecting this right angle here, ACD. How much are angles two and three? Two and three are not 90. There's only one 90 degree angle there. And it's being bisected by line BC. That's what the problem is telling you. So good try, but I only see one square box there. There's only one 90 degree angle. What does bisect mean? Cut in half. Yeah. So if the 90 degree angle is being cut in half, what do you got? You got two 45s. 45 and 45 is 90. So now we know two of the three angles in both triangles. And so angles one and four will be easy to calculate. 180 minus 48 minus 45 in this one. 180 minus 83 minus 45 on the other one. Bisect means cut in half. Now we get into the really fun ones on the next page. <laughs> I'm sure no one out there will agree with me about that, but they can be. These are like puzzles. If you like working with puzzles, then you'll be able to figure these out. So if you look at problem number eight, you got some choices there. Both of those triangles in problem number eight already give you two of the three angles. So it's gonna be easy to figure out what angle one and angle three are, right? Cause you just add up the other two and subtract them from 180. How do you find what angle two is? You just <clears throat> add 75 plus 41. The same thing we just did? Not exactly. Angle two is only part of that exterior angle. If you if you look at this this complex right here. We got angle one, we got angle two, we got this 90 degree angle. What do they create together?
are the are the bases of those two triangles all lined up in a straight line? Does it yeah. look that way to you? Looks like they're joining at the at the point. Yeah, but what about the bases of the extend both directions from that point? Is it a straight yeah. line? Is, is this a straight line, a part that I'm highlighting in blue right now? It looks straight yeah. to me. Yeah. So it's not exactly a linear pair because we got three angles in there, but they still total 180. A straight, a straight angle, a straight line equals 180, right? So how much is angle one? 75 and 41. Subtract those from 180. 180 minus 75 minus 41 is 64 degrees, okay? So angle one is 64. I already know that this angle here is 90. So angle two is gonna be the difference from what those two together and 180. 180 minus 90 minus 64. Angle two is 26 degrees. because all three of these together are gonna to give me this straight angle that's represented by those, the bases of those two triangles. Even when I draw the box around it, it looks pretty straight. Does that make sense? Any question about how I came up with that or why I did that? I don't know if these other ones, if the teacher's guide has the actual calculations in it or not. No, it doesn't. Now, problem number nine. What do we got here? sandwich yeah it kind of could be a sandwich there's not a lot of information here except for this at the beginning what is that telling us parallel lines right we got parallel lines here l and m are parallel so just the other day when we we're talking about parallel lines and transversals that's where you can get into the congruencies with alternate interior, alternate exterior, and so on. So because we know these two lines are parallel, it gives us some extra stuff to work with to come up with angle measures. We got one, two, we got five different angles in there. So I'm gonna say angle three, that's the easy one to me to pick up first, because it's part of a linear pair. What about angle four? What's the relationship there that I can look at that I don't have to calculate? There's no calculation necessary to find what angle four is. 49, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's excellent, Jonathan. And you know why? You wanna tell everybody why? Okay, it's alternate interior, right? Remember exterior, when we got parallel lines, exterior is this side or it's this side. Interior is in between the parallel lines. Forget the fact that you've got this other line over here with angles one, two, three, and a 73 degree. If this line here with two, four, five, and 49, if that's your transversal cutting through those parallel lines, then you have alternate interior between angle 49 and 49 degrees and angle four. So those both have to be 49. Now you can figure out what angle two is, 73 plus 49 from 180. 
that's angle two. Then you're going to have, just like the last one, now you got three angles there together that create a straight line. Now, I'm sure you're probably looking at problem number 10 and scratching your head. But those boxes in the corners of that shape give you information that will absolutely help you solve every one of those angles. So the fact that we have four right angles in that shape tells us what about the shape itself? Well, you, you might recognize it as a rectangle. We haven't really talked about rectangles yet. Rectangles, the sides are parallel. We got, we got, we got parallel lines here. The, the vertical lines are parallel to each other and the horizontal lines are parallel. So at some point, that's gonna come into play and help you figure out some of these angle measurements because now you can use those alternate interior, alternate exterior, consecutive interior, and corresponding angle definitions, those relationships that we just talked about with the last unit. Wouldn't three be 52? No, never mind. No, because uh, it, like, it looks like it's bisecting that square. Yeah, but I don't think the the I don't think the math would support that because you got ninety plus fifty two, and the remainder of one from one eighty is going to be angle three. I don't think that's fifty two because that wouldn't give you one eighty with those three. See, and, and that's, I'm glad you mentioned that. It does kind of look like it's bisecting and so does this one down here in the bottom corner. It looks like it's bisecting that. But, but the thing is with geometry, it may look like something, but unless it's proven or unless they tell you something specifically like being bisected, you, you can't assume that. Because if I do the calculations to figure out angle three, 180 minus 90 minus 52. It's only 38 degrees. Angle three is 38 degrees. So that's that's not bisecting that right angle up there. Hard to tell that visually. So but so you can't assume it. You've got to be able to go ahead and do the calculation and come up with the answer. Number 11 is another mixture like that. You've got some Look in the middle here, we got vertical angles, right? Two is gonna be 71. You can figure out what the others are. Once you know what uh, two is, you can figure out everything with this, this top triangle. And you just kind of go around until you got them all filled out. Now, what about these problems here? 12, 13, etc. Looks like algebra. How are you going to find X there for number 12? Are those angles equal to each other? Heck, I, who knows? We don't know. That's why we got to find X. So which one of these theories are we going to use on problem number 12 and problem number 13 to set up our equations to find X?
How many total degrees in a triangle? 180. Okay. So which which one of these, again, which one of these theories are we going to use to find the answer for number 12, which is to find X and then use that to find those angle measures? It's, it's not that complicated, folks. I don't remember what it was called. That's why I asked you how many how many degrees are there in a triangle? I get that. I get the number. I don't know the theory though. That's the interior angle sum. The sum the sum means you add up the three angles and you get 180. So how are we going to come up with an equation for this kind of problem when when we have algebraic descriptions for the three angles? You pick one and just write it out. 11x minus 21 equals 180, right? That doesn't equal 180. All three of them together equal 180. The sum, you got to add them all together. I'll show you. It's not just one. Ah. And see that. The, the reason that these theories are important is because you can absolutely rely on them. So this, this whole thing here equals 180 degrees. Doesn't matter how you describe the angles, X, Y, Z, algebraic expressions like they've done here. This angle is 5X minus two. This angle is nine, whoops, nine X plus three. The last angle, 11 X minus 21. I don't care that I don't know any of those degree measurements because I can find it now because these angles have all been described. And I know because every triangle has 180 degrees that all I have to do is add these three together and total them to 180 and then I can solve the equation. So what you end up with, 5x minus two plus 9x plus three plus 11x minus 21, all of that equals 180 degrees. Does that make sense? Everybody see how I came up with that? It's this angle, this angle, and this angle. It has to be that way because they total 180 degrees. It's not an open shape. It's a closed triangle. So now what? It's algebra. Combine like terms. 5x and 9x is 14x and 11x is 25x. Other like terms, negative 2 plus 3 gives me positive 1 minus 21 gives me 20. Plus 20 equals 180. Okay, subtract the 20. Now we got 25x equals 160. Does that go in evenly? Unless I wrote the stuff down wrong. Says X is 6.4. I think I do. I have one of these written down wrong up here. No. It says X is 6.4. That's what I got. I got the same thing. Okay. Well, good. Now you can figure out what each of these angle measures is. 
I just can't believe that there's a decimal in here because that's that just so rarely happens. Let me look at the teacher's thing here for a second. Oh, yeah, I got a sign problem. And I didn't combine my terms correctly either. So that means both of us did the same, had the same mistake, Jonathan. See here, this, is, this should be negative 20. That should have been a minus sign right there. And that should have been a plus sign. And so that gives you 200 means x equals eight. I didn't do that on purpose, but it's a good example of how if you get an answer, I mean, like I said, we so rarely end up with answers involving decimals in these kind of problems. You know, that's, that's a, a red flag, if you will, to go back and check stuff. And if you've been in my algebra class, you know how many times I've talked about signs being the main issue for mistakes. And I just did it. I didn't even intend to do that, but I did it. Um, so just, just something else to be aware of. Questions on any of that? And so all the rest of these problems, if you want to work on these, all the rest of these problems are variations of those first two theories. <laughs> 13 is another one with all the interior angles where you're going to have to add them up. 14 and 15, well, those are both exterior angle sum theory problems. So these two added together are going to equal the one that's on the exterior because that's what the theory, that's what the, the theory tells us. So again, there's, there's only two things here that, that are at work on all these problems. Those two angle sum theories, the interior angle sum and the exterior angle sum. Plenty of practice in here if you wanted to do more of those. When you get into these word problems, perfect example of where you really should create a drawing for yourself. Like problem number eight there in, in triangle PQR. If the measure of angle P is X minus 12, the measure of angle Q is 5x minus 27, and the measure of angle R is 2x plus 3. Find x and the measure of each angle. So, again, with only these two theories to work with, which theory do you think that one probably would fall under? Create a drawing. It's just like it's going to be exactly like this problem. I don't have any idea if the triangle actually looks like this. I don't even care. You shouldn't either. All we need is a triangle to work with. So we've got a triangle P. Q, R, right? That's all we got. We got three triangle, three three angles, each with a letter. Angle P is X minus twelve. Angle Q is five X minus twenty seven. Uh, 
angle R is 2x plus 3. And it says find x and find the measure of each angle. This, this is exactly like the problem that we just did. And I don't know how you can solve this in your head without visualizing, seeing the triangle that you're actually working with. So don't, don't even try that. Just make yourself a drawing. You got scratch paper. You should have scratch paper while you're doing this stuff. Draw it out. So we got all interior angles. There's no exterior angles that are mentioned. X minus 12 plus 5x minus 27 plus 2x plus 3 equals 180. I think I got all the signs correct this time. 5x minus 27, 2x plus 3. Now it's just solving for x, just an algebraic equation. Do yourself a favor, create some drawings. All these word problems are gonna be like that. They're one or the other of the two um, theories that start off the unit. Anybody have questions? Before we go on to this next section. And there goes my notes. I don't need them again. You can probably throw yours away too once you've done, done your little drawing. A couple more theorems being thrown at you. I don't know if you know about isosceles or equilateral triangles. Some people will call these uh, special triangles. They're, a right triangle is, is a variation of, of triangles in general. It's very specific. Isosceles is very specific. Equilateral is very specific. Which which Greek god was he? Isosceles? <laughs> I don't know. Was he a Greek god? No. I'm just making references. Yeah, he might have been. Uh, you know, the Greeks are responsible for a lot of this stuff in geometry. Although some people would say it was around, you know, for a couple thousand years before them. They were just the first ones to write it down, I think. So the reason that isosceles is a special kind of triangle, if you look at the drawing, what, what do these marks here on these two sides mean? You've seen those before already on other shapes. What do those mean? What do they tell you about those sides of that triangle? Perpendicular? No, perpendicular would be that upside down T. And they would be 90 degrees with each other. That's the, that's the congruency tick mark. It tells you that this side AB is congruent to this side BC. And that's the first part of what you got to remember about isosceles triangle, two congruent sides. Every isosceles triangle has two congruent sides. Look here in the definition, the two congruent sides are called legs. Where those two congruent sides intersect is called the vertex angle. Angle B in this case. This is isosceles triangle ABC. Remember how we write angles out? B, the, the middle letter is the vertex. You do the same thing here with, with describing your isosceles triangles. The side that the triangle sits on, sort of, the opposite the vertex angle is called the base. 
And then you've got these base angles here, angles two and three. The, these two theorems here are really quite simple. And you don't even need to remember the theory, quite honestly. If you have congruent, if you have an isosceles triangle, the angles that are opposite the congruent sides are also congruent. This is another one of those things you can rely on, absolutely. So if you see these tick marks here, angle, this side here, AB is congruent to BC, well, the, the angle that is, the angles that are congruent are two and three because angle A is opposite this side, angle C is opposite the other congruent side. So here's, here's the theory and it's converse written out. It tells you if side AB is congruent to side BC, then angles A and C are also congruent. The converse is just, you turn the whole thing around. If your angle, if those two angles are congruent, then the sides are congruent. And the reason that this is important is because this makes figuring out the angle measures in an isosceles triangle quite simple. Like this first one, problem number one, here's our congruent sides. You draw an X on your triangle that, that points to the opposite angles and those are the ones that are gonna be congruent. So angle J is congruent to angle L, so angle J is 68 degrees. Don't have to calculate anything. You might have to calculate what angle K is. Problem number two though, you gotta turn this around a little bit and think a little bit differently because <coughs> C and E are the congruent angles, right? They're, they're opposite the congruent sides. How am I gonna get the measurements for C and E when all I got here is 106 degrees? in that vertex angle. How much does C and E together have to total? What's 180 minus 106? 74. So how much does each of these angles, C and E, have to, have to be? They have to split that remaining 74 degrees. It can't each be 74 degrees because that puts you over 180. But because they're congruent, they're both going to be 37 degrees. Because 106 and C and E together, you have to equal 180. So everything in this section involves that theory, recognizing where you got the congruent sides because of those tick marks or the congruent angles, like here in problem three, they tell you which two angles are congruent. So these are the two sides that are gonna be congruent. So side YZ is also 12 centimeters. No calculation involved. You're gonna to have to calculate what angle Y is because that's the remainder of 180. 77 and 77, take that away from 180. All the rest of these problems are variations of that theme. The last thing for today is the easiest of all that we've done so far. Equilateral. Look at the root word, E-Q-U-I. Equal. Equilateral means also equiangular. Every angle in an equilateral triangle is the same. So how much is that?
How much is the total? 180. How many angles do we have? Three. 180 divided by three is 60 degrees. Every equilateral triangle has 60 degree angles in it. So if you go back to my example of construction, you can have an equilateral triangle that is the, the size of uh, your phone, for instance, and you can have one that's as big as a building. There's still equilateral triangles because all of the angles measure 60 degrees. The other thing about equilateral triangles is all the sides are the same. So if you know one, you know all of them. So there's nothing that they can do here to make that more complicated because that's all there is to it. Sides are all the same. You see that here in problem number 12, tick marks, all the same. Everything is 24 degrees. All the angles are 60. whoop de do. It's the easiest thing we've done all term. And that's where we're going to have to stop. See here with the other problems where they're just going to try to make it more complicated using algebra. So if, if you look at problem number 13 here, angle R is 7x minus 3. That's got to equal 60 degrees because it's an equilateral triangle. 7x minus 3 equals 60. Any of these other ones, 14y minus 59, those are all side dimensions. 9y plus 1, 11y minus 23. Take any pair of those and they're gonna be the same, right? Make them equal to each other. Set up your equations so that they're equal to each other. Solve them. Easiest thing yet. Questions, anybody? That's where we're gonna to stop today. So, Come back for more fun and excitement on Tuesday. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Text me with questions, as always, okay? See y'all later.